Welcome, collectors, and thank you for joining me for this episode of Diecast Emporium. As you can tell from the title and as you are seeing now in the frame, we are going to be doing a two-for-one in this video. We're going to be unboxing and reviewing two recent releases from Greenlight Collectibles in 164 scale. On the left, we have the 1987 Chevrolet M1008 uh, pickup truck with the State Emergency Management Office Communications trailer. That's part of their Hitch & Tow Series 22. And then on the right, we have the 2006 Dodge Charger with the NYPD livery from the TV show The Castle. So, let's go ahead and start with the NYPD car first. Now, as many of you guys know, uh, I am a collector of anything New York City related, uh, or really New York related, when it comes to uh, fire apparatus or police memorabilia, etc., etc. I spent the first, what was it, eight years of my life, nine years of my life uh, in the state of New York. I still consider that my home. Uh, I was born in Buffalo, for those that uh, have that Buffalo connection there. So I do collect anything that Greenlight releases, um, specifically New York City related, have a lot of family and friends in the state of New York, both ends, both Buffalo and New York City. But anyway, we have uh, Greenlight Collectibles Hollywood. Uh, this is a limited edition from Castle 2006 Dodge Charger. I'll be honest with you, have no idea about the castle, never watched a single uh, episode of it. Those of you that um, are familiar with the, the show, let me know. But apparently they have a 2006 Dodge Charger with NYPD livery in it. We have limited edition die-cast metal chassis. Um, I'm assuming those are two main characters. On the back, there you go. There's their logo. Uh, green light collectibles information, Series 30, ABC Studios, NYPD, and Dodge. All your copyright information right here. Ages 14 and up and 164 scale. So let's go ahead and get this thing open. Hopefully it won't take too terribly long. There's a very specific way that I open green light collectibles. Sometimes it works rather well, sometimes it doesn't. But I like to take a razor and cut along here. So basically it leaves a flap that you can flip open and then when you're done, you can put your uh, vehicle back in it. So let's see if it wants to work well today. I have never ever been a fan of carded packages or packaging and the reason the main reason is that you can't retain the collectibles value as soon as you open it so one thing that I would love green light to do if this video finds anybody from green light is come out with like a square box similar to this which is not that much more expensive and it's a window box with a flap on the end that you can open and then take the model out and when you're done you can put it back in that way it not only protects the model from dust and everything, but it retains the collectability value that something like this certainly wouldn't. But as you can see, the flap worked somewhat well. And then when I take it out, you can put it back down and the car doesn't come out. So that's something that I've been doing for the better part of 10 years uh, with my green light collectible pieces. So just a heads up for collectors that may be into that kind of thing. So let's bring in our table here. Bear with me just a minute. Here's our table. We're going to move you guys. Give me one second here. When we come back, we'll have you guys elevated so you have a better look. So bear with me one second. All right, so now we have the car on the spin table, which hopefully will give you a much better look at it here. Let me zoom in just a touch. So as I said before, this is a 2006 NYPD Cruiser. Uh, I love this casting. This generation of Dodge Charger always really... Uh, looked pretty impressive to me. I don't like this particular light bar that's on this car. I always loved the the V-shaped light bar that was synonymous with NYPD cars, and actually you can still see many NYPD cars with that light bar. So if I had to choose, I'd probably put that one on it. I'm sure this one, again, matches whatever is in the TV show, uh, but for what it's worth, I love those. The real-life kind of connection, for those that enjoy that, the chargers now in the uh, the law enforcement genre, if you will, uh, they are pretty well universally loved. There was a lot of kind of hesitance when many departments were moving from Ford products over to either Chevy products or the Dodge products, specifically the Dodge Chargers, about uh, about 10 years ago now. 
and uh, maybe more than that. But really, especially the the state highway patrols, uh, a lot of them really here in the Midwest love these chargers. They're very quick, pretty reliable, and when it comes to having to chase somebody down when they're sitting in the median, these things are pretty good at getting up and going. So, again, I always love this casting. If you want to take a look at the bottom, for those that are interested, uh, I don't know what this has a number on it. Yes, it does. So, we have number 9. I just saw it. Where'd it go? There it is. 9301 right here. Hard to see. Uh, green light collectibles used under license 2006 Dodge Charger copyright 2020 City of New York all rights reserved back to the casting we have our uh, protection bumper or bar at the front I've always known it as the pit maneuver bar police courtesy professionalism respect the mantra of the NYPD that's on all of its vehicles you have your shield up here lights police now this looks like the hood might open on this um, because you can see the way that it's done all around the side. Not sure if it does, but if it does, that would be super cool. Police on the back, your, uh, there's a number on the license plate. Again, I don't know if that's the number that's on the car or in the show. have no idea. There's another look at your light bar, and we're going to let that spin around a few more times so you guys can take a look at it. This is the other thing we're going to be unboxing. We have the... Hitch and Toe Series 22 from Greenlight, 1987 Chevrolet M1008 and SEMO Communications Trailer. SEMO, of course, an acronym for State Emergency Management Office. These Hitch and Toe sets are always pretty impressive. I have a handful of these in my collection. The ones in Series 22 include a 1943 Willys MB Jeep and a quarter-ton cargo trailer, 1976 Ford F-150 Ranger XLT Trailer Special and flatbed trailer this one which i've already mentioned a few times and then a 1990 chevy k5 blazer utica new york police and small cargo trailer i might have to track that one down as well for obvious reasons this includes the adjustable trailer jack and i'll show you how that works as well but you have a pictorial image demonstrating that there's all of your other copyright information so while i'm unboxing this you guys, again, can take a look at the NYPD charger. And I'm going to do the same thing on this. Hopefully, it's kind of hard to do the flap on uh, these hitch and tow trailers. So we'll see if I can get it to work. If not, I'm just going to have to destroy the packaging. So again, these hitch and tow trailers, some of them have flat beds, enclosed car trailers, um, other kinds of different trailers. I've even seen some with like... Uh, camper type vehicles on it they're pretty cool for those that may not know about green light they're a company based locally to me only about uh hour and a half two hours away in indianapolis outside of indianapolis they make very high quality 164 scale replicas including one of my favorite 164 scale series to collect which are the uh, severe duty trucks if you guys have not seen any of those take a look at your top right of your screen right now you will see a suggested link for those and those include some of the International Durastars, more recently some of the Mac Anthem trucks, anything from garbage trucks to dump trucks to some emergency vehicles. Uh, lots of cool stuff in there. Rollbacks, tow trucks, all kinds of fun stuff. So I've got the packaging open, almost. Trailer out first. There's our trailer. Here's our pickup truck. Now, these M1008s trucks really started life in the military uh, in the 70s and 80s and largely were replaced by Humvees. And when that happened, when their service was up, when they had no need for them anymore, a lot of them went to government surplus auctions and sales, and some of them even found their way to the civilian market eventually, as with... as is pretty much what happens with every military vehicle once it's run its course. And a lot of them ended up with other government agencies, like, for example, fire departments, police departments, and state emergency management offices, which you can see here. So, how to put the jack stand on the trailer? It's pretty simple. Let's turn this off just for a minute so it stays in one place. It has a little screw thread on it. You just place it in and screw, literally, screw it down to whatever 
predetermined height you want. This one is a little bit finicky, actually. So, you set it in there, you thread it down, and if you want the trailer sitting by itself, you obviously would screw it down enough to where the bottom portion is coming through the bottom of the trailer so that it acts like, effectively, a trailer stand or a jack stand so the trailer can sit by itself. So we've got it in there now. We're going to leave it up just to connect the two. There's the hitch at the back of the truck, obviously. That's just a simple hookover mechanism, just like that. Let's turn our table back on. So some information on the uh, EMA, the New York State Emergency Management Agency, uh, or in this case, it's labeled as the office. It's obviously a division of FEMA. FEMA is at the federal level. This is at the state level. I love the coloring that's associated with this. You have the white and then the very subtle but noticeable, if I pointed out, gold, and then it transitions to blue. Um, as I just mentioned, for those that are interested in kind of learning about it, so FEMA, think of FEMA as like the parent company, and then the state, the, the state level is directly under that. So FEMA controls everything, then it gets disseminated down to the state level, and then the local level, um, which are your obviously your, your townships, your cities, your villages, etc. So if a, let's say that there were to be a severe weather event and a lot of people instantly become homeless this would be one of the agencies that shows up before fema gets there and then it becomes a federal emergency management operation but if something smaller happens so let's say there is a partial collapse of the building that leaves 20 to 30 people displaced this would be the primary agency on scene to kind of take over and direct and look over things. Something, I don't want to say that small because 20, 30 people being displaced or hurt or whatever is not an insignificant issue, but in the big scheme of things, the, the, the big overview, it, it kind of is. So a little bit confusing, but that's just an example of how the um, how the government agency ranking structure works. Now, the trailer itself could be filled with a lot of different materials, such as, uh, obviously, some communications gear that the on-scene commander would set up a uh, command post, obviously, when they would go there. So you'd have you know cell phones, computers, etc. Everything instantly set up. Some water, obviously. Water is something that's overlooked immediately. Uh, so you'd have water. You'd have a lot of stuff in there. I won't go into too much issue because I know most of you guys are here to see the actual vehicle. So the trailer, the back of it, does pop open and does drop down. Now, again, it can be a little bit of a tight fit. And some of these, like that. There you go. So that's the back of the trailer. You can see that it has like a wood simulated finish in the back. So if you have like a 164 scale ATV or something... Uh, you can put it in the back of that. Or as I said before, if you're simulating, you know, a, a disaster scene, you can put some maybe 3D printed um, accessories in the back and have it be set up. Now, it does have two wheels at the rear, simulated bolt siding on the side of the trailer, which I like a lot. You obviously have your white box up on top. The truck itself, pretty good looking. It's your standard, you know, extended bed 70s 80s pickup truck you do have a little bumper protection bar on the front and a single old school gumball style light uh, again something that i am particularly fond of as well your bed in the back is painted black you can see there kind of a flat matte black finish covering your wheels as well decent interior you can see the steering wheel uh different seats etc etc and as for the underneath of this truck uh, 4081, we'll zoom in a little bit better here, uh, 1987 Chevy M1008 used under license, and then your spare tire under there as well. Pretty good tread pattern as well on these rubber tires. I like it. It looks pretty good. So that is my quick review and, and uh, overview of these two recent Greenlight Collectibles 
in 164 scale of these New York State emergency vehicles. Have to say, not disappointed at all. They are a worthwhile addition to anyone's emergency vehicle collection. The Hitch and Toe sets, if you find them in stores, usually sell for around $14 to $15. Uh, the Entertainment or Hollywood series are usually anywhere from 6 to $7, somewhere generally in that range. I know there are some hobby exclusives and stuff that you can find at hobby stores, maybe a little bit more. But generally speaking, if you have uh, a Meyer near you, and I did read somewhere recently that Greenlight is going to start pushing some of its products into Targets uh, and Walmarts, which will be great because more people around the country uh, will be able to have access to some of Greenlight's products all throughout the um, nationwide, which is great. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're interested in seeing my FDNY 164 scale fire truck collection, click here. If you're interested in seeing my NYPD police car collection 164 scale, click here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Take care and be safe. I'll see you in the next review.